But what I really feel good about is I have this death benefit and a lot of it that essentially says, look, if I lived a life expectancy, great. That's going to make my small assets feel like bigger assets and improve cash flow. Mm. And when I do die, it's going to fund a trust that I've really been intentional and deliberate with so that we don't have to go in and have my kids or grandkids ask for a loan when the banks are trying to charge 10% because the Federal Reserve has screwed with the economy or have them get three years taxes and then a skin tag and a blood sample and a saliva sample and, you know, and then three years, three months. Like there's so many stupid things banks ask for that yeah. waste so many people's time that what if my next generation didn't have to be born in the financial bondage I was in? So, um, to give you a little insight. So yeah. this challenge is a group of people, um, who are either, on the life 180 team or there are people that follow the channel that have chosen to invest in themselves to learn how to do it differently a lot of people come from other like an iul background that are looking to transition because they saw my content or whatever and they were like oh my gosh it's not too late to repent right exactly and so like for people watching this and and people that are kind of in the early stages or you know i don't think there's a there's only a couple people in the group that have made six figures at this point in time so if you could go back and talk to yourself or you're talking to these guys now, like what are the top two or three things that you think they need to focus on to really reach that pinnacle? Not focusing yeah, yeah. on like, I need to make six figures, but massively, like to add yeah. value to get that revenue. Massively invest in yourself, your communication skills, speaking, writing, um, marketing. Like how are you going to communicate in a way that allows you to articulate so that it's very clear and confident. And number two, learn how to be a great listener. Mm. Like really practice, like how can you listen and then ask amazing questions? And then number three, I don't know, you did you ask for three things? Yeah, I did okay, ask for yeah, three okay, things. Yeah, that's what I felt like. I felt like you gave me a box of three. I did. And I really felt good about my two. You now got I gotta two. Think about the third now you one. gotta get a third. Third one is fund the hell out of your policies. Like, fun. because you're, you gonna, go. you're gonna live by example by doing that. You know, I get questions all the time. Why would you do 27 policies? Well, I'm like, well, when I started at 50 bucks a month at 19 years old, I didn't think that was going to really sustain everything <laughs> that I needed, you know? Yeah. And my second policy at $262 a month, which was overfunded, the first one wasn't, helped me buy out my lease that was, you know, a couple hundred dollars less by leasing versus buying. And then I mm -hmm. bought out the residual 39 months later. It was a tactical thing that helped me out. I was single at that time. Then I started making bigger money. Then I got married. Then I have kids. Then I have kidneys assist that I can't get, you know, Paul, it's harder to get policies. So I, I find every time I can get more on my guaranteed issues, I take advantage of it, mm. you know, and I want to protect my kids, you know, insurability and health. And I want to have cash value that's available. Um, you know, I went from 2015 to 2019 with not touching my cash value. In yeah. 2014, I bought Elevation Group, which they had sold 50,000 financial programs digitally, which helped us move into a digital age with Wealth Factory. That's you awesome. know, in uh, 20, well, I guess in 2018, I bought this cabin with my cash value. So from yep. 2014, I bought the business and I bought this in 2018 with two other people trying to buy it, got $50,000 less than what other people are offering, but I could close in nine days. Like that was really instrumental. But what I really feel good about is I have this death benefit and a lot of it that essentially says, look, if I lived a life expectancy, great. That's going to make my small assets feel like bigger assets and improve cash flow. Mm. And when I do die, it's going to fund a trust that I've really been intentional and deliberate with so that we don't have to go in and have my kids or grandkids ask for a loan when the banks are trying to charge 10% because the Federal Reserve has screwed with the economy or have them get three years taxes and then a skin tag and a blood sample and a saliva sample and, you know, and then three years, three months. Like there's so many stupid things banks ask for that yeah. waste so many people's time that what if my next generation didn't have to be born in the financial bondage I was in? and that we could actually earn the interest that we're paying to the banks right now yeah. because we funded the trust with the death benefit and when the economies are difficult or change, the next person that dies refunds the trust. I think that that's a better situation and so my biggest challenge is how do I prepare my kids and invest in them and I'm really, you know what I'm doing with my oldest son right now. Yeah. He's 18, he's traveling with me, he's watching my videos, he's paid to find out from the content when I'm sharing what could be put on social media as I start doing a lot more of that next year. So it's a whole ecoverse of how do we build better humans within our family, invest time and money into them so they're prepared to be stewards over this and know that they're entitled to zero dollars. Mm. But if they would choose to be productive, 
they don't have to go through the dumb things I had to go through with dumb institutions that aren't worthy of making the money that they're making. I think a lot of people uh, that are, you know, trying to build their business mm -hmm. and, and they come here and they've been doing IUL um, or, and some people have been hardcore whole life people, but I think a lot of people that watch my channel and, and that are in our community, there's so much focus on whole life, whole life, whole life, whole life, whole life. And been doing a lot of pivoting because I've realized the more I've gotten like in the field a little bit and talked to the agents at the ground level, so to speak, I've realized that there's so much focus on whole life and not enough on like the human economic value on term and on yeah. term and actually utilizing it. And so what's your take on um, utilization of term and how to integrate term insurance with whole life insurance or where does which product yeah. play a solution uh, for different people in different scenarios? I always apply for both, you know, yep. whole life and term. Yep. And always secure your economic value first and then worry about the type of policy second. Even if it's all term for a while, as long as that term is convertible, now you have that option to convert it down the road when the cash flow is better. I'm more, like, this is where I'm probably different than most people. Maybe it's just because I started in 98. I have policies that I don't have no, I don't have a term writer on it. And I just did base funding because the death benefit to me is the most critical aspect. I can just perform well in my businesses and create cash flow. Now I do have overfunded policies. Mm. I'm just not as like some people in the banking kind of concept they're so big on overfunding, they neglect the death benefit and discount the value of it. Mm -hmm. But my philosophy has always been buy net worth, which is the death benefit, build cash flow. And so I want permanent death benefit over term. I'll take term over nothing or over un underfunding my death benefit with whole life because I see people with infinite banking, they got these tiny death benefits yeah. and they're young people. And I'm like, why are you neglecting that? Well, it's all about the cash value. Not really. Cash value is great. But death benefit first, cash value second, right. every single time. And so, so think about that too. From a from an agent perspective, there's a lot of opportunity in there. I mean, a you know you're able to really serve people from a perspective of I think a unique conversation at this point in time. Like right, if we use, I always say, if you want to differentiate yourself in the marketplace, you need to show up differently, right? Like, and this is a way in a world where everybody's just talking about cash value, cash value, cash value, whole life, whole life, I, U, L, I, whatever it is, really coming at it from a holistic perspective. That's like looking for love at the strip club. Yeah. Only thinking about cash value, right? It's like, yeah, it looks good up front, but it's not yeah. going to be like, I like to think about what's my life going to be like when I'm 65 years yeah. old and 75 years old yeah. and 85 years old. If I overemphasize cash and even worse, overemphasize using that cash all the time with speculative investments, right. I'm going to end up losing that cash over time several times, ha not have enough death benefit. And then with my kidneys, maybe I wouldn't be able to get more death benefit. Mm. I just think that I just think that it's only because of a lack of ability to sell properly and a lack of understanding of the macroeconomics and empathizing or sympathizing or having compassion, whatever sure. the word that's right for our future self and say, I, like if I have the most death benefit in the future, I have the most options with every other asset. If I only focus on cash value, I might underperform on the death benefit, leave this, what I would call massive deductible to my family. Mm -hmm. Cause if I die, whatever amount is now not left that could have been left is a deductible to our estate. Mm. And I, you know, some people don't even want to have a thousand dollar deductible on their car insurance. Right. But people have millions of dollars millions. of missed insurance on death benefit. So I get it. It's easy to sell the cash value to a degree, but I would be fine like having a baseline funded policy that's fully a death benefit that I wanted over a hybrid policy that has term and whole life that has more cash value up front because I'm 45 and I started when I was 18. Well, 19 is when I bought my first real good policy at 18. I bought a V well. Yeah. So you learn, I learn faster than most. But now I have all that cash value. So cash value isn't as important to me. Right. Right. So if I had like, because you think really long term. Look, I, I sold my business and that just puts you in this perspective where you're like, and that seemed like far off when I started this business in the year 2000 and I sell it in the year 2021, that's 21 years. Mm. And then I start looking about the mistakes that I made, what I would have done differently, what I didn't think about. And I'm like, man, this would have been nice to know. So I don't want to be in a place 20 years from now. I'm like, why did I only emphasize cash value? And now I have to convert this term where the, where the cash is going to be so much more extensive to have that converted than if I would have done it when I was younger. And what if, and now that I have that cash value of 
multiple seven figures, why would I care about having the next overfunded policy? It doesn't matter to me that much. I already have that liquidity. Right. I want death benefit at the highest level. Now, if I can have both, I'll take both. Of course. If I could have fully funded, overfunded with all permanent death benefit, I'm going there. Mm -hmm. But if I could have term and whole life that's overfunded versus just baseline whole life, guess what? I'm taking the baseline whole life. Okay. That's fair. That's me. I'm not saying everyone should do it that way, but it's because I'm thinking legacy. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And if you're enjoying these videos, well, there's good news. More where that came from. So go ahead and click through and watch the next video now.